All right, in this video, I'm just gonna demonstrate how to create a room design uh, or some type of architectural design using Tinkercad. Um, this is for the room redesign project and this is gonna be the original design. And I'm using my blueprint design here as inspiration. Um, the couple things I wanna note specifically for this project is we're not concerned with real dimensions. Instead, we're concerned with proportion. So when I design the couch inside the room, I want to make sure that the couch takes up approximately the same amount of space as it does in this drawing. So that looks to be about three quarters of this wall length. Same for the chair, the TV, etc. Um, I'm not worried about real world dimensions. It's kind of like a scaled proportional drawing. So again, I'm just referencing this drawing as I create this design. And for the project, you don't need to use Tinkercad. You might find that using something like Sims or Minecraft or SketchUp is a little bit easier, but obviously we all have access to Tinkercad, so that's what I'm gonna be doing this tutorial demonstration in. Now there's a couple tools that are gonna help us out that I'm gonna reference now before we get started. The first is this snap grid option, and that uh, controls how much an object moves using your arrow keys. So if my snap grid is one mil, if I tap my arrow keys, left or right or whatever, that means that the object moves one millimeter. If I change that to five mil, now every tap goes five mil. And if I change it to 0.1, well now each tap is only 0.1. So this allows you to control objects with higher precision as you're designing. So you can change that as you go. Another great tool is the lock feature. So after I put an object where I want it to be, I'm gonna lock it in place so that way I don't accidentally change it or drag it or uh, edit it. And then the next great tool is the multiple colors. So for example, if I was going to create uh, a shape that was two shapes and I wanted them to be two different colors, but I still wanted to group them together. After I group them, I can hit this multicolor and it will keep these grouped together as a single object, but also demonstrate the two different colors. So these tools are just really handy. Uh, and actually there's one more and that's the orthographic view. I'm gonna be designing this room a lot like my blueprint. So I'm gonna be designing it from the top down. So if I hit the top, button here on my cube, it allows me to look down. But if you notice, I can still see the front, I can still see shadows. This button right here, switch to flat view or orthographic, gives me a two dimensional layout that looks much more like my blueprint, which will make designing a little bit easier. So those tools, and you could always toggle that on and off, uh, those tools I'm gonna be using quite a bit in this design. And I'm gonna start just by making my room, and I'm gonna make it kind of a, a long rectangle um, and again, I'm just keeping it sort of proportional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make a box and I'm gonna kind of hollow out this box like so. So I have two boxes, a, uh, a whole box inside of an outer shell. I'm gonna select both of those and I'm gonna hit group. So that gives me my four walls for my room. I'm gonna drag in, uh, no, actually my room, it's uh, kind of a light beige. So I can use the custom color tools here to set the color of my walls. And I'm gonna drag in another box down here as the floor. And I'm gonna use that orthographic view. So now I get this nice snapped view. And my floor is kind of a dark tan carpet. Not like that, no. Uh, something kind of more like that. I think I'm actually gonna make my walls a little bit more white. That looks good. All right, and now, like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna group these two objects together, uh, but I'm gonna select the multicolor. So it keeps those multicolors. Now I'm gonna keep up with the designing uh, the shell first. So I have two doorways. So I'm just gonna grab a box that is a hole and drag in those doorways approximately where they are in my room, referencing my blueprint. Okay, and actually I wanna lift this up a little bit so it's on top of the carpet. All right, I'm just gonna duplicate this doorway and there's another one over here in this corner of my room. Uh, this one though actually isn't flush, there's a step, so I have to lift this one up a little bit higher. 
Let's duplicate this box again. And I have two windows in my living room that we're designing here. So I'm gonna rotate this guy and drag this right where my window is. I think it's about centered with the doorway. And let's duplicate that one more time. Oops, I think they accidentally changed the scale. Let's duplicate that one more time. And drag that right about here. All right, let's select all these shapes. I'm gonna hit Control A on my keyboard and then group. There we go. So that goes ahead and just about does it, although it looks like I accidentally cut into my carpet here, so I'm gonna ungroup real quick. And I'm actually gonna ungroup again. Oops, ungroup, ungroup. I wanna make my carpet thinner than it is, so I think my carpet only needs to be, let's just make it like one millimeter. All right, select all that again and group. And don't forget, multicolor. Great, all right, so there's the shell for my living room. And the last thing I'm gonna do actually is just drag in the step. So I have a very small step right here in front of this doorway. Like so. And I actually want it to be the same color as the carpets. Oops, too many. So I'm gonna ungroup it. I'm gonna group the step together with the carpet. And that should keep them to be the same color. All right, Control A, group, there we go multicolor, have the shell for my room. All right, so now that I have the shell, I'm gonna to go to my top view and I'm gonna to go to my orthographic view and I'm gonna to start to drag in some, uh, some shapes and some objects. Now for the furniture, you can choose to make the furniture completely custom from these boxes here. Um, you can also choose if you actually look into the shape generators, there is a making at home, which includes some furniture and some objects uh, let's see, I think there's some more different printable things like that, characters, connectors. This hangout space also includes like couches and coffee tables and etc. So I might pull in some of these. Um, and then obviously you can also search for the shape generators, whether it be featured or all the shape generators. These are things that were developed um, by people out in the world. So you can browse through these and maybe find some shapes that work better than the basic geometric shapes. But I'm gonna pretty much stick to the basic geometric shapes here. So my couch is a blue rectangular couch. It's a very deep, dark blue, something like this. Oops, I forgot to use one of my favorite tools. So I don't wanna mess up this house. I have this group together, so I'm gonna lock it in place. So now I can just drag this blue couch around and if I go to select it, I can't accidentally click on and mess up my house. So from the top view, I'm just going to work on building the fundamentals of my couch, making sure that it goes to about the same length as my doorway. I'm gonna duplicate this shape here and drag it here. My couch has four sections. So let's go ahead and drag another one of these and then another one, oops like that, and one more. All right, now I know that the couch actually goes a little bit farther uh, to where the window is, and there's also an armrest here, and an armrest way down here, all right? So I know that I need to actually select all of these shapes, and I'm gonna extend the whole length because it goes all the way to the end of the window, like that, all right? Now I need to actually make some backrests. So I'm going to duplicate these guys and drag them up here. This one has to be made a little bit thinner like that. And these are way too tall. They don't go above the window. It's more like this. That looks to be like my couch. So I'm gonna select all these blue shapes. I'm gonna group them together. So now it's one solid piece uh, and then I'm gonna lock it. So I don't accidentally mess it up. Uh, next, I need a coffee table. I actually need two, and I'm pretty sure I saw one that looks kind of similar to my coffee table in this hangout space. So let's grab this table here. Uh, no, that's not what mine looks like at all. Um, never mind. Mine's not like that. Let's just make our own. So basic shapes. I'm gonna leave my orthographic view here just for a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and I need to get four legs that are white, 
Let's duplicate. I'm going to select both of these, duplicate, like that. Okay. Everything looks aligned, which is good. Drop a box in here. And duplicate this box. Uh, let me move my legs in a little bit. Just make sure everything's nice and aligned. Group this whole thing together. And then I need the top. That's a nice dark brown. That big, more like that. Now I'm not super concerned with like doors and door handles or drawer handles or anything like that. So that is close enough to what my coffee table looks like. So I grouped all that together, multicolor. Let's drag this guy in place, and now I can scale it to be a little bit more proportional to the room. So my coffee table is significantly smaller, something more like this. All right, that looks pretty good for my room here. I'm also gonna lift it up so it's on top of the carpet. Okay, now I actually have another one of these coffee tables somewhere else in my room. So I'm just gonna duplicate this whole shape. And the other one's rotated like 45 degrees somewhere over here. And then I also have a longer coffee table that's again kind of sort of matching. That's it big table, something right like there. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I need some type of bin. My dog keeps his toys in like a wood crate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bin. And I'm gonna hollow this bin out. Same way I did my room, by making a whole group, something like that. And I'm actually gonna copy and paste this empty box while I have it, because he has another basket kind of inside the basket. Something like this. It's where my dog keeps all of his toys. Let's group that together, multicolor, and let's drag that over in this corner here. Something there. All right, let's take a real quick look at my blueprint, see how we're doing. So we have couch, we have coffee table, end table, end table, Charlie's toys, I need a big chair, TV stand, bookshelf, we're getting there, we're almost done. So, at least we're halfway done. Let's make this large chair, which is probably gonna be the hardest shape that I'm gonna make, and actually before I do, let's see if there's a nice big comfy chair in the hangout space. Now, the furniture you design doesn't have to perfectly match the furniture in your home, by any means. So for example, if these kinda sort of look like it, if they represent, that's totally fine. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with this middle seat uh, here, and let me see if it lets me change the color. So I'm gonna take this dark brown seat, and let me see if I can kind of make it look a little bit more like my chair. So I'm gonna grab these two, a rounded roof here, and see if I can just add these large armrests my chair is a kind of a huge leather chair. Um, unfortunately, you can't scale this shape, but I think if I put another armrest here, that looks close enough to my chair. So let's group all that together. Drag that guy here, something like that, something like that. This coffee table is a little bit smaller. So that goes right about there. All right, so there's my chair, coffee table, coffee table, couch. Looking good. Uh, now I need a bookshelf. Okay, so bookshelf's pretty easy. Probably make it way too big to start. If that's all right. Duplicate this. Um, now just to show you how I keep hollowing these out is I now just make a box that's just slightly smaller 
than what my previous box was. And then using the align tool, I can line these up and have my slightly smaller box poking through the front. So if I group them, I now have this shelf. And then to make it a bookshelf, obviously we just need shelves. So I'm gonna make some skinny rectangles. Make them the right color. Here's a fun trick in Tinkercad. If I want to duplicate multiple spots, I hit this duplicate button, I drag it up to the height, and then if I hit duplicate again, it actually just copies that and duplicates it to the same height as the previous. A little nice shortcut. So there's my bookshelf. That bookshelf has to fit right in this corner next to my step. So let's go top view. You know I have to make it a little bit smaller. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now let's, I'm actually going to my coffee table or my TV stand looks really similar to my coffee tables. So I'm going to duplicate this coffee table and just drag it out of the room here for a minute. And let's do some ungrouping. Uh, my TV stand, ungroup, ungroup, instead of having like a shelf like this, is really just, ooh, wrong one, is just a solid white cabinet like that, all right, that doesn't have an overhang all the way around. So I can pull this in a little bit, and then it's also much, 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 much taller. So this looks a lot more like my TV stand. So let's group that back together, and let's group that with this, and of course go multicolor. And while it's out, let's make a TV, okay. Nice widescreen, skinny TV. I'm gonna make the frame gray, and I'm gonna duplicate this and make a slightly smaller box. And I'm gonna use this snap grid here. So I really want this, I don't want this to extrude too much, just a little bit, and we're gonna make this black, lift it up a little bit. And then I just need to make some type of feet for my TV. And in reality, this is probably being more detailed than you need to be, but it's up to you how much detail you wanna go. And this right now is why a program like Minecraft or Sims might be a little bit easier to use, just because a lot of this might be pre-made um, for you to find furniture and objects to match your room a little bit easier than you having to make things yourself. But don't worry too much about the detail. It's up to you. All right, so let's group all that together, multicolor, and then let's pick this guy up and put this on top of my stand. So I'm just gonna hold the center it. Obviously we don't want TV to be floating. So let's bring this guy down. Let's move it back. And using my snap grid here, something like that. I'm gonna group this together and now let's rotate it around and drop it in place. So this goes right in front of the coffee table up against this wall, something like that. Okay, good. Next, I have a tiny little ottoman, which is a little black box. So that's easy. Done. Oops. Let me turn my snap grid back on to one, or let's go 0.05 or 0.5, so it's easier to move things. Good. And then the last thing that I have here looking at my blueprint is I have a very large wooden cabinet where I keep uh, driving simulators in there. So I'm just gonna make a dark wood cabinet. Again, not too worried about my handles or nitty gritty details. But that, I believe, if we turn off orthographic view, that is a pretty good representation of my room. Now, if you wanna go a little bit less detailed than this, you can. If you wanna go a little bit more detailed, like drop in some more rectangles on the bookshelf, uh, you can do that as well. Or maybe hang some like squares on the walls for photos or whatever it might be. But looking at this three-dimensional room and looking at this blueprint, 
I would say that those are pretty good and pretty cr close representations of one another. Now, the next step, of course, is to turn this in. So this is my original design. So I would put my last name or my full name. So I would say Erdreich original, original room design. Okay, because the next 3D model we make is gonna be a remake or a redesign, which I'm actually going to, in the next video, open this up and modify this existing document. I'm gonna make a copy of it and modify this one. So it's actually gonna save me a little bit of time instead of having to completely start from scratch. To turn this in, uh, instead of exporting as an STL, make sure you just submit as a link. So hit the share and collaborate, generate a new link, copy the link, and post that link to Google Classroom. 